Hey everyone, welcome to a CDH TV gameplay video. It's me, Rhetoric, here with Mons. Is that you? What? That's you me. The Christmas spirit. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Nee, 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 nee. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes a perfect green screen cut here too. And the one and only Pontus and the one and only Ooh. Emily. Thanks for joining us. So at the start of this, Mons asked me, what is this deck? What are you doing with this? It's, uh, I think it's Kyode, how you pronounce it, but essentially it's from uh, Kamigawa and it's a spirit. Maybe it's the Christmas spirit, but really it's just a five color good stuff deck. So all the classic things you'll see here. So I took a short break from playing the most powerful commander in the format, that is Francisco. But now I'm back. Yeah, the Mujin played this to a good effect in Chaos. And yeah, I'm gonna try this take on Francisco Terrasios. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Me, I am playing the five color Turbo Adnas deck, deck Hody, that can use Bring to Light to cast Adnasium, or just cast Adnasium in general. It is the most consistent Adnas deck in the format. It is not the fastest, but it's the most consistent. So we wanna slam Adnas and we wanna win. And if we don't do that, then, well, we have the one ring now, so. Maybe something. So today I will be playing Mono Green Savala. This is actually my favorite deck to play. It is really fun and it is basically just get Savala out and try to get her on the board as fast as possible and hope that you get big things. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna mulligan this right off the bat. We don't have quite enough to get her going onto the board. We have good card draw with Sylvan Library, but we do wanna get things out a bit faster. So we're gonna go ahead and mulligan this. Yeah, no, we're s we can't get Savala on the board. The goal is to get her out turn one, turn two at the latest. So we're gonna go ahead and mulligan this one more time. We got a monodork that we can get her out. It'll be a little bit slower, but we'll go ahead and keep this hand. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of Autumn's Veil on this one. Put that on the bottom of the deck and we're ready for our first hand. I really like this hand. Ugh. I mean, we don't have mana to cast Wishclaw Talisman. We can play, uh, no, we can't really do any. This is such a, I feel like this is a trappy kind of hand, but because in, in one way I could hope that I get something to play. I mean, that it's, I, I don't know. I can't even find my way around this. I'm just a little confused, but like I can't play Esper Sentinel. I can play a bird on turn one, sure, with Taiga and then play Wish Call Talisman, then fetch up something like but i don't know there's just not much otherwise like i i see some potential like wind lines and things like that but a turn one play just doesn't seem to be possible besides bop so it's debatable i think i'm gonna pitch i'm gonna pitch all right i think it was a good thing to do that because there's tainted pact here which looks awesome i also have ignoble hierarch gamble Risk study, I mean, I could play Mana Confluence and then I could play Gamble to fetch up Ristic study. We might pitch it, but still like we have some backup if we need it. Um, I could play Esper Sentinel as well on turn one. I mean, so I have like some flexible options here. I think I'm just gonna keep this one. All right, go ahead, Mons. This is not that bad. So it's not great either. We usually need a little bit more speed than this. So we have Ancient Tomb and the Lighted Halfling. Those are the good cards here because we need some like rituals to get Cody into play fast and then activate Cody fast and win the match. We also don't really have anything we can cast with Cody except for this Diabolic Intent. Now we do have a thing we can sacrifice with it, so which is Cody, but we don't really have the mana to activate Cody, cast a spell and then cast Adnos afterwards. I think in the end, we do have a time twister though. So if this hand doesn't work out, which there's a huge chance it won't because interactions here and there, time twister can set us up for in the future. I don't think the Light of Halfling and Ancient Tomb are good enough. And this is first seven. We can be greedy and gamble a bit. So let's go, is this keepable? It is a turn one fish. You know how much I love turn one fish and it's Alliance Eye Diamond. So we could use Lion's Eye Diamond to get Code into play and then hope that Fish draws into more cards. I mean, all the cards I'm currently looking at are, well, I like Sacrifice in my hand because we need a really cheap spell to cost post Cody activation. But in the end, I think this is literally going to be a hand that is just sitting with a Fish in play and passing turn maybe. We're third in turn order against a Mono green deck against a strange five-colored dragon good stuff deck, and then against 
Pontus Francisco Frasius. I don't know, I think they can play around the fish. And if this fish doesn't get me there, I'm dead. This is an all-in hand on the fish. As much as I like keeping turn one fish, I don't think this is gonna work out. I think there's a risk and the pod we're looking at isn't gonna feed it. And this hand is very all in on the fish. So we're gonna be playing safe and go to six. We are lacking like something more here. So we can get our commander into play early, but that's it. We don't have a follow up after that. We are lacking some more mana. We do have a sacrifice that is good but I am actually going to go to five. So we have a Mount Doom, a Dockside, and a Vampiric Tutor. I might actually stop at that. I mean, they are probably gonna put some artifacts into play. I kind of like this hand, honestly. I think we're going to stay here. We're going to bottom this one, and we're going to bottom that one. This is effectively a one lander, because Gaze Cradle isn't online. Otherwise, we would have two lands and a Mox Amber going from turn two. Force of Vigor is actually kind of valuable in this pod, because Cody is the thing. We don't want to over-respect Cody, but we still need to respect the Cody. But other than that, it doesn't really have anything going for it. Veil of Summer, sure. There is a Metamorph for Dockside, but like we don't really have any payoffs for Dockside. So yeah, this is just a mid-hand. Let's go to a better second seven, hopefully. This hand is very close to being actually good. But the fact that we don't have a black mana makes me not really want to keep it. If we had a black mana turn one, we could do a turn two one ring by aim stealing for crypt. And that's a so much better play that it would be worth it. But since we don't have that black mana, I am going to ship this hand. Go to six. So this hand is nice in that it has a lot of mana. It's a turn one talisman into a turn two disasters probably, with two mana over. And we do have the basalt, which is one part of A plus B. The problem is we don't really have any draw, and Thrasis draw is really slow. And like, if we actually play this hand out, first of all, we need to exile one of our blue cards to grow mox unless we top deck something, but we don't want to count on top decking something. So if we look at this hand, we just, we exile one of the blue cards, so Force Negation isn't even live. Then we play Thrasios turn two. At Thrasios turn two, we have two mana left over, and that two mana goes towards nothing. And then turn three, we have a Basalt Monolith and slash or Thrasios activation. That's not a good game plan. Sure, we have some top decks that makes this plan a lot better, but overall, that's just too slow. And when we do have interaction for Salvala, uh, not really Salvala, but Cody, that's kind of all we do have. So I would need a better game plan than that to keep this hand. So we'll go to five. That didn't go that well for us. This five just doesn't really do anything. We have one land and all our payoffs aren't actually that good. Yeah, this doesn't really do anything. It sucks, but let's go to four. So we've got mana in the form of lands. As a four, I could keep three lands on Oppo. Uh, otherwise it's two lands packed up bow. Packed isn't even live. I guess I could spite packed for content, but eh. I'm not keeping just lands as mana when the plan is an up for turn three. I'm, I'm dead by turn three. Let's go to, well, three. So I think I'm gonna have to keep this, which sucks. I really want to mulligan this. I don't really see it too being much better. It's really awkward because we don't have green mana. If we, if we could at least get the Delight Halfling online turn one, it would be... It wouldn't be good, it would be more okay. Less bad. But yeah, so we keep, we're always keeping Halfling Water Grave. Mox Diamond doesn't really do anything for me. Snap doesn't really do anything. Force of Will, Force Negation, all of this just doesn't really do anything. We could keep a Jewel Lotus, but that actually doesn't really help us. Like, we don't need to rush out our commander because we don't really have a plan for our commander. We don't have the mana to activate Thrasios, and we don't have the cards to turn Francisco online. So I actually think it is the Bow Master that we're keeping, even though I don't really like Bow Master as a plan. But yeah, keeping a dork with no green and a bowmaster without a second land. That sounds like a good plan. Let's see how we die, if it's Zavala or if it's Cody. Uh, sorry, Torek, I don't really respect that deck. Oh, go ahead. And my mysteries quickly, please. Okay, so we're going to go forest, out a bird of paradise. We're going to pass after that. Take my turn. Draw card for turn. Time for turn is Mana Confluence. Pay one life. I'm going to cast Gamble. Gamble resolves. Here is the card I found, and then we'll randomly discard. So let's select that button. Okay, not too bad. Mana Crypt, big surprise. Uh, sorry, I discarded Wish Claw Talisman. Play Chromox. We are going to imprint Ignoble Hierarch. Pass. Draw a card for turn. That's great. Mount Doom. It's a very strange art, but this is Mount Doom. Tap this, lose a life. So with the Mana Vault, things opens up here, kind of. Also looking at this, as you can see, we don't have that many Dockside triggers on in the board state. Pontus has moved very low, so the chance of him putting like rocks into play is quite low. So we shouldn't count from him. 
Redrick, however, have two. Selvala is probably just gonna put more creatures into play and not really feed the Dockside, so I don't think we should rely heavily on the Dockside plan here. So instead, we're going to develop Mana Vault, but I am not going to cost Cody because I don't have the mana to actually activate Cody yet. So we're just gonna put the Mana Vault into play, pass turn, and hope things develop for the better. I kinda wanna top take a land here, potentially. After Mana Vault has resolved, I pass the turn. Drop a turn. Oh, wait. We actually drew a game plan. Watery Grave, shocking it in. Tapping it for a fish. Yeah, fish and play. Pass turn. Raw. Tap this happy little tree. And we're going to put a wild growth. Draw. I'm going to put my shepherd up here. Allosaurus shepherd. Pass. And then roll for crypt. It's tails, so I will take damage. And then we'll draw a card. Mana Confluence and this taking a damage, making it blue. Cast for six study. You may draw from fish. For six study resolves, I have three cards in hand. I'll pass turn. Untap, cry, and draw a card. Ah, oh, that's actually kind of good right now. Volcanic Island land drop. So we have an enormous amount of mana. We don't need Cody at all currently. So what we can do, and I think this is actually what we might do here, is cost like Seeding Song, then Dockside Extortionist. Dockside currently makes five, so it's like we're up to 10 mana with just those two spells already. And then cost Vamp Tutor, find Adnos, and cost Wheel of Fortune, draw Adnos, and then cost Adnos, and we still have mana left over post Nos. There's two problems. The one is Mystic Remora, and the second is Rhystic Study. However, they are kind of tapped out. Now, they do have some free-to-cost spells that they could accidentally draw into, and that would be sad and annoying. But still, I mean, the chance of them having that is lower. I mean, I think this is a good timing window to actually try to punch through. But we have another option. We could tutor for our Rhystic Study ourselves, and then Wheel of Fortune cost Rhystic Study and be happy happy. I don't know, it's, um, that is a safe play, but this feels like Turbo Cody, and Cur Cody goes uh, Turbo into Wall and we add Nos and win. I honestly think we're going for the more risky play here for Adnos, because once again, they are kind of tapped down, and we are going to wheel for 7, and then Adnos, so the chance of us also drawing into some interaction here is pretty okay. And the Wheel of Fortune is gonna nullify all the cards I'm feeding away here. A safe play to do in this position is to do the same thing as they are doing, putting Rhystic Study to play, but I think this is a window that might work out. I'm gonna cast a Dockside floating one colorless mana. I'm not paying for the Rhystic Study. Dockside will make five treasures. I'm gonna tap this for a red lose a life and use the remaining colorless and cast a Seeding Song, gaining five more red mana to my mana pool. I'm not paying for Rhystic and I'm not paying for fish. Go ahead and draw cards. So I now have five red in my mana pool. I'm then going to sacrifice one treasure and cast a Vamp Tutor. Not paying for fish and not paying for Rhystic Study. Add no Vamp Tutor resolves. I'm finding this card right here and putting it on top of the library. This is the last card in my hand. I'm casting a Wheel of Fortune using the free mana that I had floating. I have two red mana floating left. Not paying for the fish. And ah, Rhystic Study can draw a card too. We're greedy here. We're safe so far. Wheel of Fortune resolves. Everyone discards the current hand and draw a new seven. I have exactly four treasures and two red floating mana, which means I have six mana. So we are actually able to afford one treasure into a silence. I want you guys to be quiet while I sit here and play win. Passing on all the triggers, you can draw two cards, guys. One each. Silence resolves! Uh, yeah, this looks great right now. So silence goes to the graveyard. We might need to increase the graveyard. And we're gonna tap out all free treasures and all the floating mana. I can't believe we were, like, on point by being able to cast everything. But Adnos resolves at uh, 36 life. Let's dig! Right of Flame. Lotus Petal. Man uh, Git Taxon Probe. Mox Opal. Ragavan. Crop Rotation. Tainted Pact, Bayou, City of Traitors, Final of Promise, Jeskia Swill, Brain Freeze, Imp Seal, Underground Sea, Land, Sacrifice, Land, Psychrift, Fierce Guardianship, Lions of Diamond, Demonic Tutor, 
Ignoble Hierarch, Jag mot Swill, Land, Time Twister. So I think I already have it and I probably could stop, but I'm greedy. Let's dig a tiny bit more. The One Ring, now we're stopping. Staying at two life, we're not risking anything anymore. Putting the rest into my hand. Lotus Petal, Mox, uh, Lion's Diamond, but also Mox Opal. I'm gonna sacrifice Lotus Petal, cause Sacrifice, sacrificing this, generating a bunch of black mana. With the black mana generated this way, I'm gonna cast a Demonic Tutor, but in response to that Demonic Tutor, before the Demonic Tutor resolves, I'm going to crack Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding my entire hand. But Demonic Tutor is still on the stack, so here I'm gonna generate free red mana, and then I'm gonna get my card into my hand. And the card I'm gonna tutor for is gonna be an Underworld Breach that I'm gonna cast with some of the red mana from that Lion's Eye Diamond. And now I have the Unwell Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond and Brain Freeze assembled and I have a huge graveyard so I can sit and cast Lion's Eye Diamond a bunch to build up Storm, build up mana and then cast Brain Freeze on myself or well, I could actually cast Brain Freeze on some of my opponents here as well. Mill out all of my opponents completely so their decks are empty and then keep around 10 cards remaining in my library and use the Wheel of Fortune to kill all of my opponents while I stay alive at exactly three cards remaining in my library. Victory! Well, that went fast. Are you guys up for round two? Sure. Wait, I'm first. Okay, thank you Pontus. Randomizer happy me. This is my day, I guess. Starting the game, drawing a card, playing an Arid Misa, sacrificing that. Finding a Volcanic, tapping that. Casting a Mystic Remora and uh, passing the turn. Humbug, Mons. Humbug. Draw a card. Then for turn is a Command Tower. And we'll go for a repeat. I'm going to tap Command Tower and cast Gamble. Not paying for fish. Gamble resolves. I will search. Here's the card I found. Let's randomly discard. Teamer Sabretooth has been discarded. Play Mox Diamond. Pitching this Misty Rainforest. And I'll tap Mox Diamond for a Noble Hierarch. I will pass turn. A Happy Little Forest. And put up a Symbiote. And I will pass. I will shock in a Watery Grip. Taking two. And then in a similar fashion to last game as well, I will tap it to cast a fish. Not paying for fish. And with fish play, I will pass my turn. I will go to my turn. I will pay for fish. It's been good so far. Draw a card for turn. Play a Lotus Petal. Can't pay for Pontus Fish. You can draw a card, my friend. Sacrificing this for a green. And I also want to have a Noble Hierarch. And from here, I have to discard a card to hand size. I'm gonna discard a Bring to Light, and then I pass the turn. Draw a card for turn, tap three, and be the professorial person that I am in my day job, and cast Rhystic Study. Not paying for either fishes. Rhystic Study once again resolves. I will pass turn. We're gonna throw up a happy little forest. We are then gonna tap those happy little forests, and we are going to throw up a priest of Titania. Draw your card. And with that, I'm gonna pass the turn. Pay for fish. Draw for turn. Land for turn will be a mana confluence. And then I will go to clean up, discarding this Fellow Stone. My turn, pay for the fish with these two, draw a card. Gonna put this land into play and uh, pass. First, I will tap Mox Diamond and cast Mana Vault. Not paying for your fish. Jeez, I need to use the plural, Rich. Jeez, cast Time Twister. Not paying for either. Time Twister resolves, so we will do the whole shuffling thing and then draw seven cards. One mana, colorless still, floating. I will put in for land for turn a Pluto Delta. Tap it, paying life to fetch. Getting an underground sea. All right, we're gonna throw up a forest here. Let's get Savala on that board. There she is in all her, her beautifulness. No, I'm not paying, draw your card. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap her for two getting out a sheltering ancient sheltering ancient it's a creature and tree folk has trample trample cumulative upkeep put a one a plus one plus one counter on a creature and opponent controls it costs two for a five five so it benefits me but on every upkeep a one one counter gets placed on somebody else's creature as kind of a penalty for getting a five five out with two i'm gonna go ahead and pass with that Go to my turn, untap, and an upkeep of a fish trigger. Um, we're in an interesting spot here, because we're kind of just dead in five different ways. I'm very respectful of Mon's board state. He does have a lot of duds in his list, because enabling code requires bad cards, kinda. So it doesn't need to be scary, but he does have a fresh seven, tapping with three mana, four defense, a land. That is the respectful board state. Rhetoric is probably going to be able to win once he untaps. 
Sylvala has a large creature on board and Sylvala in play. That usually just spells lose the game if you let this happen. I can kind of interact with Mons and Rhetoric in the Manglehorn. I cannot interact with Sylvala. My big issue is that I can't pay for Remora and cast a Manglehorn. I do have the Sol Ring as fast mana, but I will just have one mana available, so I would have to tap that one mana to cast Sol Ring and then not have the second colored unless I top deck well. So the question here becomes, do I play it safe? Establish a Manglehorn and try to slow down the game. I do like have a Demonic Tutor to try to find some action, but I kind of want to draw cards more. So I actually kind of think my best play is to keep the Remora, cast Sol Ring, Arcane Signets, keep a blue mana up, and then just hope to draw into interactions slash that they have interaction enough to stop each other while I keep drawing. There's a lot of risks to both lines of play, but I actually think keeping the Remora is the better play overall. So I will play for Fisher. Go to my draw. I'll play a Rejuvenating Springs. I'll tap it to cast a Sol Ring, not paying any taxes. You're Sol Ring. I'm going to cast Mystical Tutor. Mm -hmm. You both can draw from Fish. And there's a Tainted Pact. Go on top of my library. Sol Ring resolves. I'll tap it for two to cast a Arcane Signets, not paying any taxes, and then passing turn. So we're literally back to the same position as previous game. My two opponents have Rhystic and Mystic Remora in play, and I have the win on this turn. If I don't pay for Fish, I have Lotus Petal, land drop a total of 5 mana, which means I can gamble, Fasas, and consult. I have a gam consult already in my hands, so just gamble up my Fasas Oracle here and win, basically. There is a problem though, as there always is, and that problem is my two friends with Fish and Rhystic Study. Now they have tapped out, except Pontus have an Arcane Signet, but they have basically kind of tapped out, so we're kind of back in the same position. But still, the chance of them having some interaction here is pretty likely, so to say, but... There is a... Ah, like, should I go for it or should I not go for it? The, the eternal question. I honestly think that I shouldn't. But I don't like sitting here like paying for fish and like discarding to hand size, not doing anything. The longer the game goes, the worse it gets. So I think I'm actually going to fire off an attempt to win here. So Fish goes to the grave and I will untap and draw a card. I'm gonna start off with a gamble. I am not paying for Rhystic or Fish. Gamble resolves. I found a card. Let's discard a card at random. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> uh, so, uh, we have just resolved an Entomb. I discard Fessa's Oracle to my graveyard. Uh, however, we have epic solutions to all of these problems. But we can't pay for anything, but we're gonna feed heavily here. We're gonna load this petal. Can't pay for anything. Go ahead and draw cards, guys. Then we need to... It doesn't really matter. Taiga, here we go. And casting... Savine's Reclamation, targeting my fastest oracle in my graveyard. We'll pitch Fierce Guardianship, cast a Force Negation. Get it out of here. No! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, it goes to exile, and uh, I've been, as rhetoric usually say, forted, uh, or interrupted, or dispelled. I passed, I passed turn here. Untapped, there's nothing to pay for, so I will take a damage from Mana Vault. Land for turn is Wooded Foothills. Tapping it, paying a life. Bayou, we'll tap these two, and we're going to cast Tainted Pact. Not paying for fish. Tainted Pact resolves. Scrubland, Breeding Pool... Esper Sentinel, Lotho, Kedis, Force of Will, Mystic Remora, Lightning Tutor, Brain Freeze, Mana Crypt, Holy Tutor, Najila, Imperk Tutor, Grand Abolisher, uh, Badlands, Finale Devastation, Swan Song, Thassa's Oracle. This will go into my hand. Devil Hierarch, add this to cast Thassa's Oracle. Uh, Thassa's Oracle resolves ETB, I'll cast Demonic Consultation. I'm not paying for fish. So I have a response to your consult. I wanted to use my consult to win the game, but now we're gonna use my consult to survive the game. Cracking this for a black, casting Demonic Consultation. I can't pay for anything. You can draw cards, guys. My consult resolves. I'm going to name Mental Misstep. Let's look at one, two, three, four, five, and last one. Mental Misstep is not on the top six. Flipping cards, Gitaxian Probe, Dark Ritual. We have to dig deep here, maybe. Reanimate, Land, Simi Spirit Guide, Deflecting Swat. Look at so many nice cards I have in this deck. <laughs> Underworld Breach? Oh, that's bad. I don't know. I have Praetor's Cross. We should maybe be fine. There is. 
we have a mental misstep. 20 cards left. I'm the savior of the game. I'm gonna pay to life and uh, mental misstep your consult. Can't pay for your fish though, so go ahead and draw a card. You just aren't in the gift giving spirit, are you, man? No, well, I'm not. <laughs> you, you stopped me, right? <laughs> this is payback. True, true, it is payback. All right, Humbug, you have uh, you have stopped this. I have been thwarted. I was gonna name Goblin Snowman, to be honest. I'm gonna pass after that. Throw it out a worldly tutor. Okay, we're just gonna get this Regal Force then. Put that on top of my deck. We'll go ahead and draw that. All right, we're just going to drop an Elvish Mystic. Use Savala, we're going to tap for five. Using Priest, we're going to go ahead and drop Regal onto the board. When we have one floating with that. When Regal enters, I'm going to draw a card for each green creature I control, which is going to be six. So I'm going to go ahead and draw six cards. Then Elvish Mystic, bouncing that back to my hand. Untapping Sovala, tapping her again for five, throwing up Umbral Mantle. Can't really go anywhere from there. I mean, I can equip her for zero. Oh, I haven't played a land for a turn, have I? I'll throw a forest up. So close, but yet so far. So I'm actually going to attack Rhetoric for five. I'll just throw back up this Elvish Mystic. I'm going to use the other two. So we'll get Collector Oof on the board. And then I'm going to hit Rhetoric for five. Because why not? Sad, sad. Passing turn. Go to my tur turn and let fish die. Then draw for turn. <laughs> That's a top deck. <laughs> Land for turn will be a Ancient Tomb. I'll tap it, taking two damage, floating colorless, and a Watery Grave to cast Francisco. Not paying for roosting. I will Rollick the Oof. Rollick resolves. So here I have two main lines I can execute. I can either Demonic Tutor for Mean Betrayal, uh, Mons has Gamble and Lotus Battle in his graveyard. I can gamble for Mana Crypt, cast Mana Crypt, cast Lo Lotus Battle, that's three mana. And because Mean Bet lets me cheat on mana, mana Colors, I can cast Thassa's Oracle Consult from his graveyard. Or I can cast Oracle from Mons graveyard and Consult from Notorious graveyard because I'm cute. That line is guaranteed to work, barring interaction. Uh, Rhetoric has 11 cards in hand, but he has used some free interaction already, and he didn't have interaction during his turn, and he's drawn four cards since. So it's not that likely that he's, he has interaction. The other line I can do is way more in line with my what my deck wants to do, because I can cast Cauldron, and then I can cast Rover Mansion as an Entomb to put Walking Ballista in my graveyard. Then I can e exile Walking Ballista with Cauldron, and give Francisco a counter, and then activate Francisco to ping someone. And as long as there's not a land on top of my deck after that, I will just win the game. So that line lets me first draw less, but I might fizzle on my own. But since that's what my commander wants to do, I actually feel like I kind of have to do that one instead. And it's kind of more hype to just have a kind of coin flip if you win. So I actually think the objectively correct choice is to do one or two for me better. But this one is funnier. I like having fun. I will pay three mana to cast a Worth Mansion, not paying first thing. Put a Walking Ballista into play, but since it's a zero zero creature, it will go to my graveyard. I'll then tap Soul Ring, still have one mana floating, cast a Agatha Soul Cauldron, paying for stick with my Mon Colorless Floating. I will tap Cauldron, exiling my Walking Ballista. I'll put a counter on Francisco. I will activate Francisco's ability from Walking Ballista to remove a counter and deal one damage to, let's say, Mons. <laughs> Mons will take damage. That will make Francisco explore, because he's one or more pirates. I will reveal the top... Uh, wait, reveal? Wait, what does Explore say? <laughs> So Explore says, reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put the plus one plus one counter on this creature. Then put the card back and on top of your library or in your graveyard. So I will reveal the top card of my library, which is a Flusterstorm. I will let Flusterstorm stay on top of my library. And then I get to the one more counter from the Explore. This means I can repeat this, remove counter, deal one damage, revealing the Flusterstorm, and repeat that process for infinite damage. Pinging down the table one at a time. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Good game. And with that, we're going on a break for the holidays. We'll be back in the beginning of the new year, and we'll see you then. Bye Merry bye. Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. Bye. Bye. bye.